Hey guys, welcome back. In quite a few of my past projects I used 18650 cells uh, as a power source and in future projects I'm again going to use these cells. But one thing you have to make sure when working with them that is if you connect them in series you or rather in parallel that's the important part they have to be at the same voltage potential so if you build bigger cells with them they have to have the same voltage so you need a way to charge them and that is what this project will solve for me and for you if you are going to build one yourself this one is a four cell battery uh, charger and we have a battery holder we have four uh, BMS slash chargers, you only need chargers, we have a DC to DC converter so we can get in a high voltage, we regulate it down to the 5 volt the chargers require and they then charge the 18650 cells. Now this thing has another very uh, nice feature and that is it has a voltage reading over here to make sure that the DC to DC converter always delivers the right voltage. And another more important feature for me is it has a USB port on the side and in my previous video I showed you these uh, M voltmeters that can measure battery capacitance and I can just insert them in here uh, switch it on and you can see I have a reading what I can then do is just connect my DC electronics load and uh, measure the battery capacitance so the fourth cell gets disconnected from uh, the, the the DC to DC converter and can now be discharged. So we can either charge four cells at a time or charge three cells and discharge and therefore capacity measure the fourth cell. And now without further ado let me show you exactly all the components that I'm going to use and let's build the unit. Okay so here are all the components necessary for this build. First off we have a battery holder for 18650 cells I decided to go for this style of connector instead of the typical style because it's a bit easier to extract the cells once they are inserted. Next off we need four charging circuits for 18650 cells. I went for BMS and charging circuits. There's not a particular reason behind it but my build will have one feature for capacity measurement so you should, if you want this feature, at least equip one of the cells, the cell that you want to uh, measure capacitance with. If you want to do that, obviously, uh, you need a BMS slash charger. For the rest, you only need charging circuits. Then I have mounting hardware. I went for nylon um, hardware, just nylon standoffs, nylon screws. You don't need them. It's just what I have on hand. Then we have four switches, just two pole switches, so I can connect and disconnect the BMSs to the power source. And the power source in this case will be this uh, buck boost converter. You essentially only need a buck converter because the chargers accept 5 volt, and it's not very likely you have a power supply under 5 volts. So uh, a buck converter will do just fine, but I don't have a buck converter that can handle 5 amp. And each of these chargers will charge an 18650 cell with 1 amp, so you need at least 4 amps if you want to utilize full charging capability. And this Bakbus converter can handle 5 amps, and that's the reason I went for this one. Then we have a DC jack for the power supply. As it's a Bakbus converter, you can give in like, I think what's 3 volts to 32 volts. But I will mainly utilize everything above like 5 volt, so 9 volt, 12 volt, whatever source I have on hand and a DC jack to connect it to. Then I went for a voltmeter to make sure that the output voltage is always 5 volt. And then for my special feature I have this over here. This is a USB connector with two cables connected for plus and minus. And the way it's designed is I have a bigger switch for one of the cells. In my build I have cell number 1, 2, 3, 4. I will have one switch for each cell and the fourth cell will get this bigger switch. The lower two, these lower two ones uh, connect the uh, power supply source to the charger 
and the other two will connect the B plus B minus from the charger slash BMS to my USB connector and then I can use one of these and that I showed in a previous video and they can measure battery capacitance so what we can do is connect a DC electronics load discharge the cell and the BMS will safely protect the cell and we then can just unplug it, plug it into another power supply and take the measurement because this thing stores what it measures and that's really awesome. So I can discharge the cell, go away and it's completely safe and I will know the exact capacity of said cell. And my design is a design with this over here so I don't have a enclosure, I just use these um, two plates of this compound material, very thin aluminium plates with thick plastic in the middle, very strong, normally very expensive but these were scrap pieces, a lot of scratches on this side, the other side was fine. Now the first thing I will do is connect the uh, battery holder onto the front plate and to do that I'll use very strong double-sided foam tape. Alright, foam tape on the back and now I have to align the battery holder and just stick it down. Okay, now I can get these cables through the lower holes and next up we can glue down the BMS chargers or the charging circuits. It depends on what you decide to uh, use. And I have to line them and again they will be glued down with foam tape. This is a very strong tape so uh, that's absolutely no problem. And you may, see, you may be able to see that in this corner Maybe I should zoom in a bit. There are three holes. So these holes for each of the uh, charging circuits, the negative comes up right where the negative is. And these two are for battery negative and positive for the USB connector. But as only this one, the fourth cell, has this feature, only there are additional holes. The other ones, only the ones the one single hole for negative, battery negative. Okay, so they are glued down. And I'm now going to install the standoffs. No, I can't install the standoffs. Not now. No, because the standoffs grew into the bottom standoffs. So I have to start cabling. Guess what? I'm going to install the switches. That's one thing I can do right away. So let me see. The four switch goes on to here. So the big one needs to go on the bottom left. And again, I will just stick them down with double sided tape right on the edge. Now, the negative each go to one of the switches. And then I need another piece of cable going through these holes and into the BMS charger. Okay, all the cables are now prepared and we have number one going over here, number two going over here, so this is short, number three again to the top, number four here on the bottom. I'm going to use some tweezers to hold them in place. Okay, number one, number two, number three, and number four. Now I have to attach additional cables so they can go through the holes to the BMS. Okay, so I pretend the cable and stuck it through the first hole. And I think what I'm going to do now is pretend all the pads of the charger so that this is done. That shouldn't take too much time. It's just so in this case, the f this is the fourth cell uh, charging circuit, so I need to connect not only the plus and minus four ingoing side, 
and battery plus and minus, but also the BMS pads, which are these, out minus, out plus. And these are uh, connected to the BMS, which will protect the cell. For the other ones, I only need to put in the positive and negative, as well as battery positive and battery negative. And now I can connect the first cable. This is battery negative, so it has to be connected to battery negative over here. Okay, now I can grab the cable, get it through the back through the hole, so it's a bit more neat. That's very difficult to see, like this. Just through the hole. That should look much better. And then I can just cut it to length and solder them into place. I have to repeat that process for all the switches, which I will do off camera. But before that, I will go ahead and attach all the positives. And they just can go down into B positive. And I think I'll do it like this. I will bend them down. I need more light. Bend them down like this. Cut them to size and solder the battery positive in place. Just like this. And that process I have to repeat for all the connections. So I will do that and come back as soon as this is done. Okay, and that's how it looks when all the positive and negative are connected. That's how it looks on the back side. All the negatives connected to the switches, which are then connected to the battery negative on the battery holder. Next up, I'm going to install my uh, USB connector. And this will go in over here on the back side with the small PCB. And I have some screws somewhere. Now we have these two cables. One is negative, one is positive. This is positive, this one is negative. Let me see. It doesn't really matter which I do switch. So let's say I switch the positive because negative is this cable. I just have to feed the cable through one of the holes. And I will choose the one that is closest to negative on the BMS. And I will use the lower two connectors. I should have done this differently. Yeah, I'm going to use the lower ones for these. And the upper ones for the USB connector. Well, it doesn't really matter. I just need to have access to the lower two connectors, so I have to desolder them. This one goes to the lower connector, okay, and this again has to go all the way up. Is this enough? Yeah, that's, that's good. The scrap piece is enough to go all the way up. Just pre-tin this part. And that gets soldered to the lower connector over here. All right, and now we can solder the other ones back in place. And that should be fine. So all the connections are, yeah, that's all right. This one can go up and through the last remaining hole over there to battery positive. Now I have to solder this in place. Pretty thin it and then this is our negative. Okay, so that's in place. And the next thing to do, and the last thing to do, and then we can install the bottom plate, is the DC jack which will be again glued in place with some double-sided tape and I will have to get cables through these two holes. Okay, so now I installed the DC jack over here with 
some foam tape. I used scrap uh, pieces of this um, wire that came with the battery holder because this is thicker gauge wire and can handle more current. And I also installed the back plate. We have four standoffs over here for both the um, buck boost converter and our voltage meter and two screws down here to give it more stability. And I will now install the buck boost converter on these two standoffs and we can wire the rest. Okay, so we have our in negative over here and our in positive over here. Have to cut them down, solder them in place. That should be a rather quick thing. And that shouldn't be too difficult. What you could also do uh, over here is insert a switch between your DC jack and the buck converter or buck boost converter. And this would allow you to have the power supply uh, inside of the DC jack all the time and it not being powered all the time, but not being powered all the time. Uh, that can be beneficial, but I don't really need this because I'm just going to unplug it if it's not in use. And um, yeah, it's not really necessary. Okay, so this is in and our out needs to be connected to each of these chargers. And before I forget it, I have to install a voltmeter. And what I'm going to do now is use four cables uh, parallel to each other. I could use higher gauge cable, but I don't have a higher gauge cable that is easy to uh, wrap around here. So what I'm going to do is just use four pairs in parallel. So four positive, four negatives. Then they will end in each of the corresponding BMSs. And the way these voltmeters work is pretty simple. You have three cables, you have your negative, you have your positive and yellow, this is the sense cable. And we'll just connect yellow and positive to positive and ground to ground. And that will give us an indication of the voltage. So essentially I'm going to bundle four cables, use solder and then solder all, the f all four cables in place at once. And that should be fine. I think... Yeah, that's fine. So negative is connected. And now I can use one of these cables to go to each of the negatives. Like over here, over here, and just cut it down to size before soldering. So what I'm going to do now is do the same thing for the positive, cut the cables to size and connect them. Okay, so the charger is now complete. Everything is wired accordingly. And that is how it looks. We have switches for cell number one, cell number two, cell number three, cell number four, our USB port for capacitance measurement, the four charging circuits, the DC to DC converter and our voltage meter and also our DC jack for charging.